Watch Chris, tell me where you at? Your motivation guy is back, man. I'm hyped up, man. It's your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. And I'm back again to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips to make you like the best Fortnite player you could possibly be. Today, we're going to be talking about decision making. Cool, man. This is so important. You got to watch the entire video, okay? All right, so, you know, quick off the top of your head, you're low on mats, but you have a good loadout. Do you engage with an enemy? You just spot it? Or do you sit back and avoid the conflict? So getting right to the answer might be a bit more complicated than it appears to be. But if you're sharp with decision making skills guys you're gonna make the right choice here that's what we're gonna talk about today help you make those choices it's gonna take you to the next level so uh before we get this started it's time to get my favorite candy so we can watch the video with it it's that bunch of crunch yo and let's get this going the first decision that you make during a match is landing all right so where are you gonna land What's gonna be the first course of action? Will you kill as many enemies as you can before leaving or you know, will you grab what you need to go? This all depends on where you land, first of all. But you know, even knowing this, you still need to know how to make the right call. You know, Do some research on the best landing spots, look for contended spots and just empty spots, then select one based on the type of match that you're playing. If you're playing early arena, consider going contested for those extra kills. If you're playing upper rank competitive, then try to find somewhere where you won't be bothered by other players as you loot and set yourself up. One rule some players use is the three kill Room. Like when landing contested, they will try to get three kills maximum before heading out. This is just a good way to prevent yourself from getting too greedy with the kills and just getting eliminated quickly. And this is because the more enemies you eliminate, the more noise that you make. And uh, if you're surrounded by other players, they're going to be drawn to the noise, right? You're going to have more opportunities to make eliminations later on. Don't worry. If you need help planning your early game strategies, then click on the link below to visit ProGuys.com. There, you can get connected to pro level coaches that can help you make better decisions in game. With ProGuys, it doesn't matter if you come in as a fresh noob or as an experienced player. You're gonna learn something new that's gonna elevate your game, I'm telling you. Rotation is an in-game choice that changes depending on, you know, the stage of the game. Rotation can be anything from going from one location to the next, swapping positions during a fight, or even entering the zone during the later stages of the game. You know, one thing many pros like to do is avoid a direct path to the zone. Sure, this would be a shorter trip and can get you to where you need to be much faster, but uh, it's a predictable move that can give other players an opportunity to pick you off. You know, this is why, guys, like you should always consider entering the storm circle through the road less visited. This means avoiding any major POI and using a vehicle to go the long way around. And so this also means a safer rotation and you won't have players headed in the same direction as you every time. You know, worst thing is just getting beamed from behind while you run towards the circle. Speaking of zones, rotating can get more complicated once you do reach the end game. Like in a casual match of Fortnite, odds are most players are going to be eliminated before the fourth zone. The higher up you go in ranked and the more tournaments you enter, the more players you're going to be playing with the end game in mind. And so this means, man, like there's going to be more players trying to claim their spots in the zone this can leave the zone crowded if you arrive at the last minute don't fret though like as long as you stay out of the line of fire you should be able to sneak in and just start boxing yourself up with the coming battle you know one item that you should definitely have in your inventory is a launch pad Oof. this can make rotation so much easier closer to the end game many pros carry it in their special build mat slot and you should too like if you want to try to get on top of an opponent's build you can use this to really launch up in the air then rotate closer to the zone this can give you the high ground and if you're quick enough you can utilize this time to start claiming pieces. All right, so getting a refresh is a simple concept. Kill an opponent, take their loot, and watch your mass and ammo get maxed out so you can keep fighting longer. Sounds easy, right? Well, uh, <laughs> it's a bit more complicated than that. And uh, how you decide to approach this can affect whether or not that you get eliminated or not. Refreshes are a late game skill. Throughout most of the match, you're gonna find plenty of chests and ammo boxes to stock up on ammunition, right? Meanwhile, structures such as rocks and trees provide plenty of mats to start off with, but you won't always have them to harvest. Like your only source of supply at this point will be killing other players. Pro tip, the worst thing that you can do with a refresh is to get too anxious. Yeah, uh, you might need the mats, but is it worth making sloppy mistakes over it? Like if you get too cocky or you just try to rush an opponent out of desperation, it won't end well, I'm telling you. Instead, guys, you should take it slow, use a methodical approach so you can focus on the fighting decisions that you need to make. And so even if you get the kill, make sure to clear the area before swapping out your weapons for better ones. Like you don't want to be caught in the open adjusting your inventory. When and when not to engage in a fight is a critical skill, especially when you start playing matches where Storm Surge becomes more relevant. If you want to be an aggressive player who W keys, you might find yourself attacking anything that moves. But in Arena, the effectiveness of W King starts to shift when more skilled players enter the mix. In other words, guys, not every fight is the one that you want to mess with. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to want to step away and just keep on walking. In higher competitive matches such as tournaments and cash cups, Storm Surge is more likely to happen since less people 
people are picking fights and more of them are just simply trying to play for in-game. This is why, my friends, you need to make sure to deal a certain amount of damage before the next storm circle. Players with the highest damage output are usually the safest since they're more active in the match. Those who haven't dealt any damage when storm surge begins are most likely to get eliminated when the game shaves uh, a few more players off the top. So keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to get the elimination, you just need to deal more damage. And so one good way to get into fights is to third party other players. Yeah, that's right. Like if you see two players already engaged in a fight, then you gotta use that distraction to sneak up on players and just tackle them one at a time. And it might be tempting to just spray right into the fight, but just lock onto one target. I'm telling you, it's gonna help you focus more. This is the opponent that you wanna strike at first. So just wait till their backs are turned and then open fire. Like if you can just try getting closer to the fight before firing, that'd be great. And so if you're too far away, it's possible that you're gonna land less of your shots, but also alert all the opponents too soon of your presence. And so this gives them more time to prepare and might just result in you getting sprayed before you officially even enter the fight. Your loadout is always going to be tailor-made for you, I'm telling you. But that doesn't mean that it's just influenced by the current meta. The spray meta means machine pistols and SMGs are in, but you also want to include an AR in there. Your choice of loadout and how it evolves over the match can really become difficult the closer you get to the end game. You know, there are just so many choices and so many situations that are good, but to make choices even more difficult, there's only a certain availability of items out there and you aren't always guaranteed to find the rarity that you want. And so during the end game, my friends, like you might want to consider just dropping that sniper rifle in favor of a shotgun. Sure, shotguns haven't really been great this meta, but being able to clip a large amount of health off an opponent is still welcome, especially in close quarter situations. So you might not be able to really like land that sniper shot in the enclosed spaces so it's just really best to have weapons that can really do the trick an epic shotgun in this situation would outshine a legendary sniper so weigh your needs and just choose what's going to get you closer to that victory health wise like there are plenty of options and it all depends on what you need and even the format you're playing in competitively floppers are the best items to have during an endgame like they heal chunks at a time and they're just very quick to use also in this category are the chuck splashes since they can be used to heal your shields quickly you know, one of the toughest and possibly quickest choices that you need to make during a match involve build battles and box fights. Competitive Fortnite revolves heavily on the building meta, and because of that, it's just easy to start building mazes around your opponents as you peace control. But just like you claim pieces, your opponent will also be doing the same thing. Now comes the hard part. That requires your brain to work overtime, right? Like, which wall do you edit to get a clean shot of your opponent? If your opponent has taken a moment to heal, okay, so how do you get closer to them without constantly smacking walls? Well, the first thing that's gonna help you make these decisions it's mastering peace control and just knowing it counts your current pieces on the board if you're aware of what you have available to you then it's going to become easier to know which pieces that you can and can't edit and so this next step guys on learning your options is knowing all the possible edits that you can make and so if your opponent is below you you need to be able to decide quickly like if you need to break through the build or if you can just edit your way down there if you own the floor then edit a hole and just drop down sometimes you know the best way to become better at decision making is being able to see all the possible options on the table. You could do it. Before we drop you off today, don't forget to visit ProGuys.com for pro-level coaching. But your girls tell me where you at, your motivation guy is back. Well, that's going to wrap up things today. If you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys spread the word. We got so much content coming out. Also, feel free to leave a comment and just let us know if there's anything that you would be interested in learning more about. We got you. Remember, let me say this. Sharpening your mind is just as important as enhancing your mechanics. And so if you become better at making quick decisions during a match, then you're going to be on the right track towards becoming a better competitive player. But you got to believe in yourself before anybody else does. And I know you can and I know you will. So keep your head up. Connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.